Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're looking at earthquakes, two new missions from NASA, one mapping the ground and the other the space weather impact on our magnetic field. We also have space weather notes from the last day, so we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Pretty quiet. Following yesterday morning's filament eruption, we have seen no solar flaring, no significant filament destabilizations, and the solar wind is relatively calm at Earth. Those minor geomagnetic storm conditions are ending. But we've got items to watch over the coming days, especially as the sunspot situation finally appears to be beginning to amplify once again. Even without flaring thus far, the spots are growing and gaining complexity, to the point where this morning we have a couple items of note. Big spots up north, they grew a lot and they have flare potential, but are only going to be relevant for Earth for another day or two as they are turning towards the limb. Incoming hemisphere on the equator, that one is growing as well. It will be relevant for at least four to five days. Then we have the incoming coronal hole. Not as big as the last one, but definitely situated on the equator over on the left there. It'll face Earth this weekend, impact Earth with enhanced solar wind early next week. The top quake of the last day was a 5.8 in northern Greenland. It is not every day you catch one way up there. And we also see the southern Japanese swarm is continuing. It's been a heck of a month of shaking there. And while the multi-shake days have reduced, the moderate rumbles are still striking the region just about every day. Eyes still on her. Folks, the GEMX mission is flexing its mineral scanning technology. It's set to upgrade our understanding of what's in the ground with extreme detail. And it can do the entire world faster than a thousand ground teams on a thousand cups of coffee. Would be interested to see these final products compared with the crustal magnetic maps. That could be informative. Lastly, folks, the Tracers mission. We mentioned it a few days ago. It's NASA's new magnetic field monitoring mission. And in addition to baseline readings where we can track the power changes over time, its flight path through the polar cusps means we're going to get a pristine look at just how much solar particle energy is entering the Earth system. So any mainstream climatologist watching this who have been gatekeeping the sun out of those models should be very nervous right now. Folks, pre-sales of my book will come this weekend. Timeline suggests this eighth book of mine could be the last before the disaster. We're only ordering as many pre-orders as we receive. More details are coming in the next few days. But first, our monthly issue of Observer Review comes out tomorrow. Tons of excellent science updates from the last month. And for less than the price of a McDonald's Happy Meal, you get instant access to every issue we've ever put out. Well over 400 pages of science tailored for observers who only want to hear about the sun, weather, earthquakes, and the disaster cycle. It's the only publication of its kind on Earth. Don't forget to check out the events at Observer Ranch as well. I'm going to be out there Friday for the kids' rocket launch and hopefully get to do a Q&A with the permaculture class. Highly recommend that one. It goes Friday to Sunday. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.